Hey boys and girls, Mr. Wojcik here. I am going to show you a new activity in Scratch that we're going to work on. And the first thing <clears throat> that you're going to want to do for Scratch is sign in. Uh, so you're going to want to create a new account. And to do that, let's just go over here. So I will have a link for you uh, to click on. I can't show you how to click on the link and create the account, but basically it's going to walk you through some information. Um, so what I've been having the kids do in class is do their first initial of their first name, uh, last name, and then maybe a number at the end of your name. And then for your password, all I do is Hawks, H-A-W-K-S, for your password, and then that same number you used at the end of your last name. Just so it makes it a little simple to remember how to log in. So Hawks and the same number you used at your last name. Could be a favorite number, could be um, an age, it could be whatever you choose it to be uh, is fine. Uh, so maybe it's a favorite number to a sports team or a sports person on the team that you know. Uh, like Tom Brady's number or, um, you know, whoever it might be or whatever it might be for your number. Just something that's easy to remember so you can log in and save your activity because this activity is going to take a little while to do. <clears throat> so I will post a link on Seesaw for you to sign in and log in to account for Scratch because not only will we need you to save your work for here in tech, uh, and and uh, engineering, but also science and uh, for science for Mrs. Samick, she's going to want you to do some scratch activities as well uh, related to what she's doing in STEM. So here we go. <clears throat> Again, I'll post that link on Seesaw. You probably have been seeing that link, uh, but I'll uh, post that link on the journal page in Seesaw. <clears throat> Along with on this activity, will I will also on the tech page. So here we go. Uh, so first thing you're going to do for Scratch is we're going to create an interactive pet uh, for this activity. And by meaning interactive is, is mean if your pet's hungry, you're going to need to feed your pet. If your pet's thirsty, uh, you're going to have to give your pet some water. So it's a virtual pet, uh, just like a real pet at home, except for uh, you're going to make it uh, do the things that you want it to do or eat the things that you want it to eat based on the activities we have here for Scratch uh, or the things that they offer us. So I'll go through the whole thing with you. Uh, I might record this in two parts uh, if it seems to get a little long. Uh, I might have part one and then next time or next week I'll do part two. So here we go. The first thing you're going to do is get rid of the Scratch Cat. If you want Scratch Cat to be uh, your virtual pet, that's fine, but there are other pets to choose from. So I'm just going to get rid of Scratch Cat here. I am going to choose a Sprite. I'm going to click on Animals. And I'm going to choose the, the puppy. There we go. And then I'm going to choose a background for my dog to be in. And I think I'm just going to have the soccer field here. There we go. All right, so the first thing that you'll want to do is in introduce your pet. Uh, what is your pet's name? And your pet can be any name you choose it to be, as long as it's appropriate, of course. Uh, I'm going to start with my events block. I'm going to click on a green flag, when clicked green flag. And now remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause these videos and restart them after you do your coding activity so you don't have to feel like after you have to watch the whole video again just pause the video and and then uh, uh, go ahead and and restart it when you catch up so i'm going to have midnight say actually i'm just going to add to hello I'm gonna space at the end of the exclamation point uh, my Name is Midnight. And Midnight's going to say that for two seconds. So if I click on the green flag, my dog's going to say, hello, my name is Midnight. And again, you can 
introduce your dog with any name you want. That's your choice. The next thing I'm going to have my dog do is, when clicked, I'm going to go back to my yellow uh, block and I'm going to click on when this sprite is clicked. So my sprite's going to do something or my dog's going to do something when it's clicked. And the first thing I'm going to have my dog do is make a sound. And you can see it's on dog already. So I'm going to click on just start sound. And let's see here. Let's see what that says. Oh, it doesn't say anything. Start sound dog two. It does not say anything. Oh, maybe my volume's down. Hold on. Yep, my volume is down. And you might not be able to hear it anyway. All right, so here we go. So my dog barks. But now I want my dog to make a movement. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to control. I'm just going to repeat it two times. You can repeat it as many times as you want. I wouldn't repeat it more than 10 times. I'm just going to repeat it twice, the activity I want my dog to do. I'm going to repeat the activity to switch the costume. So I'm going to go back to oh, purple. Find switch costume. So there's a bunch of costumes I can have my dog do. I can uh, have the, the puppy be to the facing to the right side. I can have the puppy sit. I can have the dog uh, go to the opposite side of, of uh, what is showing right now, or I can show the back of the puppy. But I don't want to show the back of the puppy, so I'm going to keep it to the right-hand side. And then I'm going to wait. Go to the yellow or gold blocks. I'm going to wait one second. Let the puppy do its thing. Wait for one second. And then uh, sit. So I don't want it to do all at once. I want to have that weight block in there because if I don't have the weight block in there, then you're not going to see it happen. It's going to happen so fast, your eyes can't see it. I'm going to have my puppy sit. And then again, I'm going to have it wait for one second. So let's see if that works. That should work. So I'm going to click the green flag. Midnight speaks. And then I'm going to click on midnight, sits for one second, and stands back up. Okay, twice it does that. You can change these numbers around for it to go slower. So if I want to wait uh, two seconds, I could definitely do that. Okay, and if you want to add uh, some different movements on there, there are four movements. And you can see all the movements in costumes. So I'll click on that again. Puppy waits two seconds for each movement. That's a little better. I kind of like two seconds. But I can see all the costumes in my uh, costume. If I click on costumes here, I can see the four movements that the puppy does. So the puppy to the right, sit, puppy to the side, and puppy back. So those are the four uh, movements you can make your, your uh, puppy make. Um, so you, if your character doesn't have any uh, extra movements, uh, you can't make a movement with your character unless you create one. Uh, so you could create a movement for that character. So you can just right click. Nope. Maybe my computer is not going to allow me to do that here. So you should be able to right click and copy and add another picture here to customize your, your picture. Uh, but my right click is not working here. So let me hold down on my picture here. There we go. So I can duplicate that picture. And now it's the same exact picture, but I could actually maybe add a different color collar. Um, I, could, I can't physically, I would have to draw my puppy maybe laying down, erase its legs, pretend it's laying down. Uh, so there's a couple different things you could do with that. I'm just going to delete that. And you're not hurting anything by adding pictures or adding movements. That's just your choice. All right, so there we go. There's my puppy. And I'm going to go back to code. So now, like I said before, we're making an interactive uh, virtual pet. And to do that, I need to add some things that I want 
my puppy to do, uh, like eat. So I need to add another sprite. And I want my puppy to eat some food. Oops, I'm going to click on food. And there's not, you could create your own food for uh, dog food if you wanted. I'm just going to choose something here. Uh, and I'm going to choose my puppy likes cheesy puffs. How about that? There we go. So my puppy's going to come over and eat some cheesy puffs. We all like cheesy puffs. All right. So uh, what your puppy's going to do is it's going to want to eat some food here. So I need to tell it to eat some food when it's hungry. So I'm going to click on, I have a, my, I have two sprites now I have to code. I have to code my puppy and I have to code my uh, Cheetos here or my food. So let's start with the food. I'm going to click on the events block. I'm going to click on when this sprite is clicked. I'm going to have them broadcast a message. So you're going to get broadcast message right there. All right, so and you're going to click the arrow next to message one. And you're going to say it's a new message. And I'm just going to type in food. There we go. And I'm done. I'm done with coding the food. But now, when I click on this, when I click on this food for the puppy to tell me when it's hungry, I'm going to have to have the puppy come over and eat. Okay, so when I click on here, I'm telling the puppy it's okay, yes, go eat your food because you're hungry. So here we go. So now we have to go back to the puppy. So you have to click on your, your animal sprite or your creature sprite, sprite, whatever you chose. And we have to code uh for that puppy so when that puppy receives a message so you're going to choose when i receive now i notice this is already food because we made that block we told it to be food over in the cheetos so this changes automatically so when the puppy receives a message for having or getting food it's going to glide over to the cheesy puffs and you're not going to glide to a random position but guess what if i click on this arrow cheesy puffs are there so now the puppy is going to glide over to the cheesy puffs when i tell it to go get some food but when dogs eat they're noisy so we have to make a sound so i'm going to play a sound and I don't want the, bucky, uh, the puppy to bark when we're making the sound. So I'm going to go click on sounds. And I'm going to search for a sound. And you can search for any sound you want. Uh, but I'm going to search for a specific sound here. Let's see if I can find it. Do not see it here. So I'm going to... Search for it. I know what it's called. C H O M M P chomp is what I want. So I want this chomping sound when the puppy's making. I can get rid of dog here on this one, and I just want chomp. All right, so I'm going to go back to code, and now that should be chomp. Nope, I have to change it to chomp. There we go. All right, so now my puppy will come over and it'll make a chomping sound. All right, so now I want to, like I said, a virtual pet is going to tell you when it's hungry or not hungry, okay? So we want to we wanna bring in a variable is what we want to do. So this variable here is going to tell me, tell you to change the puppy's hunger. So I'm going to change. So if I click on here, I'm going to click on change hunger. Oops, I'm going to rename my variable to hunger. There we go. So now my variable is named as hunger. So I'm going to change the hungry by four. 
max. I'm going to change it by negative 4. There we go. And I'm going to wait one second. So I'm going to go back up to my wait block. Now, you can change this variable to whatever you want. I chose negative 4 just because uh, then the puppy won't be so hungry uh, when I feed it. I can also change the wait time. So if I want to change it to 10 seconds before the variable changes and the puppy is telling me it's hungry, I can wait 10 seconds. One second is pretty fast. Uh, so I can change it to whatever I want. I'll keep it to one right now. So what's going to happen when the puppy receives the food message, it's going to start saying, yeah, I'm hungry. So tell me to go get some food. But now I want the puppy to glide back after it eats. Okay, so it's going to glide over the cheesy puffs. So I don't want it hanging out at the cheesy puffs. So I want it to eat and then go back away from the cheesy puffs. Now, we can tell the puppy to glide back fairly easy because, let's see here, the puppy is at uh, minus 73x and y46. If I change this, my number changes. So if I want my puppy over here, Notice my, my numbers changed, okay? Maybe I want my puppy over here. My numbers will change to wherever X and Y are. So there's a, there's a grid here. So X goes across the middle of the page, just like this, and Y goes down the middle. And there is a actually a grid here to show you that X and Y axis. I think it's at the bottom here. Mm. Let's see if I can search for it. So it's not showing up, but there is a grid here, and I just don't know where it is off the top of my head. To show you what X and the X and Y axis looks like. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's in, it's not in characters. It is in backgrounds. So here's the X and Y grid. So if I change the background, this is what the X and Y grid would look like. And every time I place my puppy, it's somewhere on this X and Y grid, and it shows these numbers. And that's how you get these numbers. So my puppy is actually sitting and, and uh, going through the program as I click on it. But you can see the numbers change. And based on where this X and Y axis is, so if the puppy's right in the middle, you can see X and Y is 0, 0. So I'll try to get it as close as I can to 0, 0. So there we go. So we're almost at zero, zero, right in the middle. Okay. So if I go straight up to the top, Y is 180. Okay. Oops. I can't get that high. I go right about there. So I'm almost to 180. Y is 12. So I'm a little bit over to the, to the right-hand side on X. And then almost to 180 all the way to the top for Y. So that's how the X and Y axis works. So I'm just going to have my puppy over here. Notice the numbers change automatically. And now my puppy's always going to glide back to this spot. So, and you can change how long it takes to get him or her to that spot. All right, so let's just go ahead and see how this works. I'm going to press start. Hello, my mid name is Midnight. I'm going to click on the cheesy puffs. Comes over, makes a chomp and the puppy comes back. Now I don't have a hunger ticker or um, to show you how hungry the puppy is yet, uh, and that's coming. So we can see how hungry the puppy is in just a little bit. So again, uh, you can click on uh, start the green flag. Hello, my name is Midnight. Click on the puppy. Puppy's gonna Sit and stand for you for two seconds each time. And it's going to repeat two times. It did not bark for me for some reason. I'm not sure why. Let's see. Let's see my volume get turned down again? Nope. For some reason, my puppy's not barking. I'm not sure why. 
So I think I took the dog sound off. So let me go ahead and find that sound again. I guess we do need that. So let's see here. Let's get my animals. And let's do dog two. There we go. Now it should bark again. So you do need to keep that sound there. I took it out of there. So now let's see if my puppy barks. Let's see here. Where is dog two? There we go. There we go. All right. So I just had to change it. And now it barks again. So don't get rid of your sound like I did. All right. And then if I click on the cheesy puffs, the puppy's going to come over, take a chomp, and go back to its spot. Perfect. So in your iPad, your space like mine might be getting a little small. So you can always click this icon right here to shrink this picture and give yourself more space. Okay, and we can always make that bigger, clicking the middle box, and then full screen to make uh, it a full screen picture. So I'm going to click those arrows again. I'm going to click the smaller box. Now we have to program the puppy and put up a ticker so we can see how hungry the puppy is and see if my ticker is a good one to use or if I have to change the numbers around. So I want my program to start unless the green flag is clicked. So I'm going to click on the green flag. I'm going to go to my variable, and now I want to set the hunger to zero. And I'm going to set that hunger to zero, and I should get a ticker up there eventually here. So let's see how that, if I can get that up there. And then forever, I'm going to make that puppy get hungry. And that's how your virtual pet is going to tell you it's hungry or not. And this is where you want to choose to tell you to have it wait five seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds or however long you want uh, to have it change that hunger. So I'm going to have that variable change the hunger by one. So what this is doing Let's see how this works here. There we go. Hi, midnight. And let's see if we have our ticker up there. I don't see it up there for some reason. Let's see here. There's my green flag. Night. Why is my ticker not up there? And it could be my background that's covering it up. So let's see here. Uh, let's see here, cheesy puffs, broadcast food. Ah. All right, just change my background again. All right, back to my code. I think I have to show the variable hunger. So let me click on my puppy again. And let's put that here. There it is. Okay, so there's my variable hunger. And after every five seconds, the puppy is going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier, okay, by positive numbers. It's going to tell you it's hungry. Every time it eats, it's going to go down by negative four. It's hunger. So if I increase this, my puppy's hunger is at two right now. So it's starting to get a little hungry. It's increasing every five seconds uh, and the puppy's getting hungrier and hungrier. Okay. So when I click, I'm going to wait till it goes to five. 
when I click on the Cheetos, the puppy's going to go over and eat, and it's going to change its hunger back down to one or two or wherever it's at. So it's still a little bit hungry. I'm going to feed my puppy again, and my puppy eats more. Now it's in the negatives, and now it's zero. So my number is changing rather fast. So you have, have to spend a lot of time feeding your puppy, right? So you have to keep going to the food bowl and, and feed that puppy. It's a growing puppy. It wants its food. So if I keep feeding it, it's going to go and continue to eat. Now, we don't have to feed dogs in real life that fast, but you can see every five seconds, my puppy is going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. So I can go back and I can change that weight block to 10 seconds. If I change it to one second, watch what happens. Every one second, the puppy's going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. That's way too fast. So I can go back and change that to every 300 seconds if I want. And now you have to figure out how many seconds, how many minutes are in 300, but that's a little slower. It's still, for a puppy's point of view, pretty fast uh, to go uh, be hungry that quickly. You can change that number uh, to a bigger number if you wanted. I don't even know how big we can make that number. So maybe we want 10,000, that puppy gets hungry. So you would have to kind of figure out how many seconds are an hour, right? How many minutes or how many minutes are an hour and just kind of figure out hey, some multiplication facts, uh, figuring out how and when that puppy would be hungry so you can go feed it. So my puppy's at 24 hunger right now, but it's not going to change for a while. So I can go and feed that puppy and it shouldn't be hungry and its hunger is going to go down farther and farther. And it's not going to increase very much. And again, you can make it increase as fast as you want or make it increase as slow as you want. So after you feed your puppy, you can also, let me change this, you can also change the hunger by more. So if I want the hunger to go down farther, I can change this to a negative 10 maybe, and the hunger will go down faster. So there's a few numbers that you can change uh, to make that hunger go down faster. So if I change that back to two seconds, uh, that puppy's going to get hungry every two seconds. And But my hunger value is going to change and go down fast when and that puppy gets hungry. Okay, so let's start that program. Hello, my name is Midnight. My puppy should be getting hungry. There it is right there. Okay, so we'll just let it get hungry. It's going up pretty fast. But if I click on it, now it goes down by 10 into those negative numbers. So my puppy is not going to be as hungry as fast. So there's a couple of variables, and that's why we call it a variable in math, because you can change those va variables uh, to a slower number. And you're going to work a lot as you get older with variables in math. And this is kind of a good experience with variables uh, that you can do. And a lot of your games have variables in them that you're playing. Uh, so, so there's all kinds of variables in your game. So this is a good way to create a game uh, to, to use a variable to see really how a variable works and make a variable. So let me just kind of review what we did. And then, uh, and then I will make a second part of this. And you can probably figure it out on your own, but we have to make our puppy, puppy drink water as well. So hello, my name is Midnight. We waited, uh, introduced the puppy for two seconds. We had the dog make a movement, we did a repeat block, repeated it, its movement two times. We had to put those weight blocks in there twice. Uh, so we also had to broadcast a message from our Cheesy Puffs to tell the puppy it was hungry. And when the puppy was hungry, we told the puppy to go to the bowl. Show First of all, we wanted to show the variable hunger. All right, so we got that in the orange blocks. Uh, and again, it showed you how to make a new message or rename a variable. Okay. 
and then we glided uh, to the cheesy puffs to one second and again all we did was choose whatever uh, sprite you have out there it should show up automatically you just have to click on that arrow and move down we had the puppy make a sound when it was eating and then we had to change the hunger value about how fast the, or slow uh, the puppy is going to, going to reduce its hunger so a negative number uh, just like negative temperatures, the, the, the bigger the number, the colder, the colder it is out in negative temperatures. The bigger the number uh, in negatives, uh, the less hungry the puppy is going to be. We waited one second before uh, so the puppy could eat. You could wait longer if you wanted. And we glided back to a certain number we chose on that X and Y axis. I'm a little bit far up here in the corner. Uh, kind of in my my uh, my variable. So my puppy's head's in a variable. I probably should have moved it down a little farther. And I can change those numbers. So I can I can go down here and I can change it to, uh, let's see, be Y, I could change it to 100. And now my puppy's gonna be a little bit lower, uh, I believe. So let's check that out. Stop it, start it, click over here. And there we go. My puppy's a little bit lower. I could even go a little lower on that y-axis, probably 90, and my puppy would be a little lower. Okay, so you can change that number as well if your your puppy's not or your creature's not in the same spot. So then, to make our puppy hungry, we started our program with the green flag. So everything starts on the its hunger starts when the green flag is clicked, uh, just like when the green flag is clicked, uh, the puppy says it's hello. Uh, my name is Midnight. Also, it's hunger starts when the green flag is clicked. So we set the hunger to zero every time we start the program. So when I stop it and start the program, this variable always gets set to zero. Okay. And if you keep the program going and don't stop it, the puppy's hunger is always going to keep growing. So forever, we told the puppy to wait for two seconds and change, change its hunger by one. That's pretty fast. So we're gonna have it change its hunger uh, by, what did we say before, by five, uh, I think is what we had. What do I have? Nope, by one. So let's see what happens when we change it by five. All right, so that might go up pretty fast actually. Yep, so that's going up pretty fast. So we don't wanna change it by five. We want to change that hunger Puppy's getting really hungry. All right, so we don't want to change that number. We want to change the wait time is what we want to change. So you could wait for that puppy to get hungrier uh, at a, for a longer time, like we said, 10,000 or 1,000 seconds. Uh, so you kind of have to figure out how many seconds are in maybe an hour, two hours, and then change that number accordingly so your puppy is not hungry. And maybe you want to have the same schedule if you have a dog at home or a pet at home, you want to figure out how, how much time it takes to feed your pet in between feedings and then figure out that time frame and match that time frame with your, with your uh, dog at home or your pet at home. So you could try that out too. Because I have a cat at home and she gets fed. Uh, I just pour a, a cup of food in her bowl and she gets fed about once every two days is what uh, she gets fed because she goes through that cup of food in about two days. So uh, that's about it. So now I had said we would add a water variable. So basically you're going to do the same thing. So I could hold down on here and I could duplicate this block and I could duplicate this block. Okay. And I would go ahead and if I duplicate it, let me just duplicate this block here. If I duplicated this block, I could make a water dish. So now I would just have to change a few things. I would need a new variable. So I'd rename this variable. Okay. And I would have to broadcast a new message in the cheesy puffs. So I'd have to Duplicate this. You're basically doing the same exact thing, but you're going to change it to water. Okay, so I want a new message. 
water. And then I would get a new sprite and get a bowl, probably. There we go. Not a fish bowl. That wouldn't be good for my puppy to drink out of, probably. There we go. So there's my bowl. And all I would do is click on the cheesy puffs. I already have that made. So I'm going to drag this right onto the water dish. That should go in there. It's going to stay here also. So I'm going to get rid of that. But it should be in my copied right into my bowl. So there it is there. So now, magically, if I, click, oh, if I click back on my puppy, I should have a variable that says water. And oh, I, gotta, I guess I gotta rename the variable. Water. There we go. When I receive, oh, there's my water message. So when I receive the water message, the Puppy's going to go to the water. So now I just have to change where that glide to is. So it's going to glide to the bowl. Probably not going to make a chomp some, but we'll keep it. We're going to have the water value chain be the same as the food, but you might want to change that around a little bit. I'm going to wait one second, and we're going to glide back to the same spot as water. So now I just need a water ticker. Oh, and that change on me automatically? Oh, that's because I changed this. Let's see here. I renamed that variable. Let's see here. I think I have to create a new variable. It's going to rename all the variables. Yep. So let's see here. make a variable. There we go. There we go. So I made a variable. Let's see here. There's my water variable. I can change it to water. There we go. All right. So I'll change this to water. Okay. So all I have to do is copy this one. I guess I was going to show you this next time when I'm doing it. And I should now have water, water. There we go. So now, oops, now stop this, make this bigger. There's my water video or uh, variables. Again, my puppies are kind of behind the variables, so I have to change that a little bit. There's my water, or my food. There's my water, and that will slowly go down. Uh, I have to, again, change those numbers. I think I have it at 1,000, so you're not going to see that change, right? So you're, you're not going to see that change at all. If I change it to 1, now you're going to see it change pretty quickly. Start the program. Hello, my name is Midnight. You can see it's changing and its hunger and thirst are growing pretty fast. There we go. There's my two variables, right? So it's always going to be changing. So notice how that four changed. The, if I keep feeding it, the water variable keeps changing. So it gets a little crazy at one second. So again, you want to change that one second to a a bigger number so it's not having to be that hungry that much because your puppy would be, be making messes all over the place. All right, so that is how you make a virtual pet. Uh, so any video games that you have or any games that you've ever played making a virtual pet um, online, well, now you just created one. And uh, this is kind of fun to, to have around. You can have, uh, you can add a brush where you brush the puppy if you wanted to add, uh, you know, how to, how to make the puppy walk, a leash if you wanted to make the puppy walk, anything that you would do with a pet, uh, you could try to create here. And the puppy wanted to go for a walk, you could have a leash go around its neck and 
pretend it goes for a walk. So all kinds of fun things you can do with it. Uh, have a chase the ball, whatever you want to do. So have, be creative, have fun, uh, and show me what you can come up with.